Well, the Constitutional Court will today hold a special sitting to mark the retirement of Justice Edwin Cameron. Cameron will officially step down today after a 25-year career in law. Cameron worked as a human rights lawyer during apartheid and fought hard for gay and lesbian equality. He was appointed to the Constitutional Court in 2008. Chief Justice Mokhweng Mokhweng and other justices of the Constitutional Court will attend the ceremony. We now cross live to our editorial contributor, Karen Morn, who's standing by. Karen, a very good morning to you. He's worked as a human rights lawyer He's uh, during apartheid. He's defended gay and lesbian rights during his career as a, a legal expert. And uh, today officially marks the end of an era. What can be expected for the day? Well, thank you so much, and Paul. A, a very big day for the Constitutional Court, one of the uh, most prolific and highly regarded jurists in South African history, in democratic South African history, retiring um, today, stepping down from the bench. And of course, um, Edwin Cameron, very outspoken about his HIV status and his drive to ensure that people had access to the ARVs that at one stage, only his partic uh, particular position of um, you know, privilege allowed him to access and one of the people who was very, very similarly involved in that struggle um, for the rights of, of people with HIV to access ARV treatment was Mark Hayward. I mean, you here today, why? I mean, what, what are your reflections on this man's career and his contribution to our democracy? Well, I'm here because, you know, Edwin has, I've known Edwin for 25 years. <laughs> uh, I joined the AIDS Law Project at Wits University in 1994 when Edwin, who was the founder and still the head of the AIDS Law Project. And since 1994, he's been a friend and a mentor and a comrade and somebody who has been an inspiration to activists and to activist uh, uh, lawyers. So I think we all have an enormous debt uh, to Edwin. Uh, you know, you mentioned his contribution to activism around, around AIDS. I think you can describe Edwin Cameron as the father of the human rights response to HIV. Uh, it was him who in 1992 developed the first charter in South Africa on HIV and human rights. He got Nelson Mandela to sign it. He got Chris Harney to sign it. He got Mangasutu Butalezi to sign it. He founded the AIDS Consortium. He founded the AIDS Law Project. He was behind the scenes encouraging us to found the treatment action campaign. So, and then of course, you know, he became a judge in 1994 and he's been 25 years uh, on the bench at the High Court, at the Supreme Court of Appeal, at uh, the Constitutional Court for the last 11 years. And what I think we've seen in his life as a judge is that he's taken all those values that he developed as, a, as an activist and has infused the law, has infused constitutional law with, with those values. So it's a day, it's a historic day for the country. Personally, it's a day for me that marks the passing of a quarter, a very important quarter century. I mean, I think... You know, this role of him as an activist, when he became a judge, he didn't stop being an activist. He didn't stop. And I think people often forget that at that time where ARV treatment was being denied, um, particularly to pregnant mm. women, that seminal court case that actually I don't think the ruling was here. I think it was even in the building that preceded. It was. It was I was there. It was in yes. the old Constitution yes. Court. Yes. Yeah. I mean, this is the very court that said, like, you know, it's, it's, it's irrational and unlawful yeah. for, um, you know, pregnant women with HIV to be denied. This life, uh, this, 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 this treatment that could essentially ensure that their children do not have HIV. Yeah. Um, you know how, when you look back at that time, how how courageous was he in actually coming out well, and saying, you know, this is not acceptable. It's not okay that this is what we're doing right now. Well, he was incredibly courageous coming out as a person living with yes. HIV. And remember that he did that in the course of an interview by the Judicial Services Commission for the bench. Wow. Um, and remember that he did that, I've forgotten exactly which year it was, but in a time when stigma was much deeper, much darker, much more threatening, when there was literally hatred of people living with, with HIV, hatred and, and, and blame. And then, you know, Edwin, in a sense... He couldn't lead the struggle for treatment because he'd become a judge, but he inspired it. So we had many interactions with Edwin where you could always call Edwin Cameron and say, would you come and speak to a group of TAC activists? And he would always be available to come and do that. And, and you know, again, I think it's, it's about 
living your, your values. So you mentioned that Edwin went on to antiretroviral treatment. I was with him, in fact. I sat around, I had tea with him one evening with Edwin, Zaki Ahmad and myself when he took his first antiretroviral wow. medicines in 1997 at a point when he was very sick with AIDS. But, you know, he didn't stop, okay, my life is going to get better again because I have access to medicines. That, I think, created the passion that if I can have access as a judge, as a person who, has, who is reasonably well moneyed, then it should be something that every yeah. single person living with HIV has access to. About Judge Cameron, there's no arrogance, there's no snobbery. You know, he's as comfortable with the poorest person coming out of a community who lives with HIV. He identifies with that person. That person helps, help, 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 is able to identify with him. And that's the way I think that you that you build what we call social cohesion. Absolutely. That's the way you build this constitution in our country. I mean, one of the things that I think people might not be aware of is that he grew up, you know, in very difficult circumstances. His father was a convicted criminal. Um, you know, a lot of his childhood was spent in an orphanage, his sister dying at the age of nine. Um, but yet he, you know, when he came into a position of power, when he came into a position of comfort, he didn't sit back yep. and allow that comfort to, to kind of anesthetize him from the realities of our gro gravely unequal country. Yeah. And I mean, what do you... Africans looking at this extraordinary life get from it. What is, what is Edwin call, Cameron's call for us and, and how we live our lives? Well, I think you've said it. I think what you've said is that there is nothing wrong as individuals in each of us trying to get to the top of whatever it is, whether it's the highest mountain, whether it's the top of our career as a business person, as a lawyer. You know, we should all seek excellence, but it is possible to reach the top of a career, but do so in a way that keeps you in touch with ordinary people and continues to serve the public good. So in a certain ways, I think Edwin Cameron represents a tradition that is quite strong in South Africa, that you see in people like Nelson Mandela, many of our liberation struggles, where you show that getting to the top doesn't mean that you mean earning millions and millions and millions and getting the biggest house and the biggest car and forgetting about the society around you. You can get to the top and you can remain completely in touch and committed and to advancing the rights and the interests of the people that you live with. Thank you so much. That was Mark Hayward, of course, someone who spent many years in the trenches with Edwin Cameron during that struggle for ordinary South Africans to get access uh, to ARV treatment at a time where government's policy was simply not to provide it. Of course, a seminal court ruling in that case actually being made by the Constitutional Court, not in this in this particular room, but um, nearby. Um, and really like an extraordinary call to action of someone who came from immensely humble beginnings, um, became one of the most powerful judges in South Africa, but still fought for the rights of the poor, the marginalized and the oppressed. Back to you. Thanks, Karen. A really powerful interview. I really like uh, what Mark had to say when he said uh, Cameron is the father of the human rights response to HIV. Really um, uh, putting in some powerful um, um, uh, you know, uh, descriptions, saying it's about living your values or we should all seek excellence. Really a historic day it is today and uh, one that should be celebrated because this is a man who has made significant strides. Absolutely, and I think that all South Africans are very, very grateful to him for his life, for what he has done, and for the bravery that he displayed at the time when just even coming out and openly declaring his HIV status. He remains one of the few government officials, someone in a, in a quite a profound position of power to do so and within the context of South Africa that was immensely important um, you know he, he's also spoken to me about the fact that Nelson Mandela at that time came and spoke about his child who had, had uh, passed away as a consequence of HIV uh, related illness and what that did in a South Africa where HIV was incredibly stigmatized where people were afraid where people feared for their lives if they declared their status and that act of bravery in doing that that act of bravery and saying to people, life is possible, you know, I, you know, you can continue with this, you don't need to be afraid. That, you know, the, one of the most profound things about him is that he's, his very existence has constantly chosen, tell, told people to choose hope over fear. 
and that reverberates, I think, you know, throughout our history, and it will be something that defines why we honor his life. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Our editorial contributor, Karen Morn, there, uh, just ahead of a really historic day for the country. Justice uh, Edwin Cameron stepping down officially today after 25 years um, serving the country.